Let's solve this coding challenge. It's in C++. It's called Maps STL. And when you start it, they're going to give you a refresher on how to use C++ Maps. An example here, you get the map and then you specify the data types for the keys in your map and the values as well. Then um, you can give it a name. For example, here you have a map where the keys are going to be strings and the values are going to be integers. The name of the map is M. You can get the size of the map by calling the size method on it. You can also insert items in the map, that is key value pairs. So you call this function make pair and you specify the key, in this case, hello, and the value, which is nine. And you can also erase elements, that is removing elements from a map by calling this erase methods and you specify the item that you want to remove. You can find elements in a map by creating an iterator. So you specify what sort of iterator do you want. In this case, we want to iterate through a map that has strings as keys and integers for values. And now we need to call the find methods on the map that we created. For example, M, we specify what we're trying to find and if we found whatever we are looking for, then we're going to have an iterator pointing to that position in the map, pointing to the item that we want. Otherwise, if we could not find what we were searching for, then m.find is going to return us m.end. So I think they specify this here. You can see iterator is equal to m.end. So you can always have a conditional statement after your find method that says if the iterator is equal to m.end, it means that I did not find what I was looking for inside of the map. Otherwise, do something else. Here they say to get the values stored in a map, you can also use this notation with the square brackets, just like you would for an array. And you can even assign values inside of your map. So if whatever you have here doesn't exist, it's gonna get created and the value will be associated to it. In my videos, especially if you watch my lead code videos in C++, I use that notation most of the time. Now let's look at the instructions for this challenge. They say here that we are assistant to a teacher and we have some students and some marks. There are some queries that we need to work on. So in this challenge, we have a certain number of queries and the queries are gonna be of three different types, one, two, and three. If the query is of type one, it's going to be followed by X and Y, where X is the name of the students and Y is the marks of the students. If we have a query that is of type two, then it means that we need to erase the mark of the students. So we're going to have two followed by X, where X is the name of the students. And we also have query type three is going to be followed by X. And this means that we need to print the marks of the students whose name is X. Otherwise, we need to print zero if that student doesn't exist or doesn't have any marks. So have a look at these examples here. In this case, we have seven queries, three of them of type one, meaning we have to insert some marks. We have some queries of type three, meaning we have to print the marks of those students. Then here we delete the marks for Jess and then we print them again. So this here is my solution. First, you're going to have, I think, some headers in C++. They are already given, but I think I added this SSStream header myself because I'm going to use it in my solution. So here we have the main function. I need to get the number of queries, that is Q queries. For example, the number here in this coding challenge is seven at first. So here I need to get an integer and then I need to use C in to get the value for my variable. Then I need to create my map. The keys in the map are going to be strings and the values are going to be integers. I'm calling my map M and this map is going to be to associate students with their marks. So the name of the students are going to be strings and the marks are going to be integers. Now I need to loop for every query, for example, this query, and then this one, and then this one, and so on. I'm looping from i equals zero all the way to the number of queries. At every iteration, I'm going to get some variables that I'm going to use. First, I need to get the full line of query, for example, one jesse 20. And this is what I do here using the get line function. And I'm storing the full line in my variable, it's a string called 
query. So here you see query for get line. Then here I'm getting an input string stream called query. That's why I have this SS stream header here at the very top. And when I get this input string stream, I can now extract the first token and store it in my integer variable called query type. So if you look at the instructions again, we have three different query types. We have type one, type two, and type three. That is what they explain here. So the first token that I extract from here is going to be the query type. Now, if that type here is type one, then I can extract two other tokens, the name of the students and the marks for that students. Notice that here at every iteration, I have these variables here. I have student name and I have mark right here. So that's why I'm able to use them inside of my for loop like this. Now, because query type one means that I need to insert the marks Y for the students X, as they explained here, I'm also doing the same thing here. First of all, I'm checking, do I have that students in my map? So I'm using the find function here, like I explained, if that student doesn't exist yet, then I can go ahead and insert that student with their marks. And here I'm calling the insert function and I'm using a different notation from what they have here. I'm not using that style, rather I'm using this style here. So I have curly braces and in between the name of the students and the marks for that students. So that is only if the students is not already in the map. Otherwise, if the student exists from my iterator, I get second, second is the value and plus equals will add the current mark to the mark of the students. If the student exists, I'm just going to add the mark to the existing mark there. In other cases, the type of the query might be two or three, because the first if statement here is if the query type is one. So let me drop this down. Otherwise, what I can do is extract the next token. There's only going to be one other token if the query type is two or three, if you look here. So I get that token. Then now I can try to find my student inside of the map. And if the query type was two, it means I have to delete the student. So I first check here, if the student exists, I can delete it. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, then this condition will be false and nothing is going to be done. Otherwise, if the query type was three, it means that I have to print the marks of the students. I can only do this if the student was indeed found inside of the map. So I use C out and I print the marks for the students. And to do that, I'm using second on my iterator. If you use first, you're going to print the key and the key is the name of the students. What we want here is the marks for that students. So for the marks, you use second to get the value of that key inside of the map. In other cases, if the student doesn't exist, then I have to print zero. So that's what I'm doing here. And when I'm done, I return zero to say that the program executed properly. So let's run the sample test case first. We've passed the same test as they have here from the instructions. Now let's submit it. And we have many test cases, about 19, I think, and we've passed all of them. So um, we are done now with this HackerRank challenge. It was called Maps STL. It was in C++. If you like my solution, please subscribe, check out my GitHub, and I'll catch you next time.